What are you doing? So we're currently in Barat right now. And we're going to go all the way up to Tirana. But how we get there is a bit iffy. Basically, these yellow roads are what are meant to be motorways. <laughs> but as we experience coming in, most of these are potholed and quite even quite dodgy roads like and cars like swerve across the lane and blind corners and all sorts anyway if that's what we can expect of the yellow roads i'm not quite sure what we can expect of the white roads um so potentially we might come up to here and then come back and across or go up and then we'll see um just had an interesting situation uh, with a police officer I was going to and he came across he only had a bit of a glimpse at us and then he pulled us over to the side and then he realised that I'm on this side of the car he saw the number plate. And, it worked, and or he saw the number plate and then he just waved us off so like been getting kind of that vibe by a lot of the police officers actually that they just don't stop tourists I don't think yeah. or maybe they only stop Tourist um, anyway, we've got uh, about two hours till we get to Tirana, um, which should be good, hopefully. It's not as hot today, thank God. That first day in uh, Brat was very warm. Uh, I did not handle it well. But yes. um, we were meant to leave uh, Brat yesterday, but uh, after our dinner the night before, uh, we weren't really feeling up to it. Um, the owner keeps serving Dylan these shots of raki, uh, which is like a strong Albanian spirit. It kind of tastes like vodka, but it's made from leftover grapes after wine. Um, and he just keeps serving them to Dylan. Did you enjoy it? Yeah, that's fine. But you wanted to try it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't enjoy the morning, but now it's good. Leaving Barat in our rear view mirror, we continued to Tirana, Albania's capital city. We weren't sure what to expect. We had been to a few major cities over our travels and each was so different. So we were both nervous and a little excited at the same time. As we got closer to the city, we experienced something we hadn't in a while, traffic. Except traffic here was more survival of the fittest. The road line soon turned unimportant as we just followed eyes wide hoping we'd be in the creek lane. After parking up we decided that we wanted to have a look around and find some food to eat. Morning guys, um, so for the last couple of days we've been in Tirana um, and we've just pretty much been enjoying the cheap food. Um, I got some new shoes um, because actually I've been walking around with half a sole on my track since Switzerland so it was a bit overdue. Yeah, this afternoon Dylan's going for a tattoo um, but today we're going to go to Bunker Art 1 which is a converted bunker. Um, Dylan knows more about it but pretty much um, it's a museum they've made a museum out of this bunker so it's five levels I think and you pretty much just get to explore it which is pretty fun uh, we're going to catch the bus there we're going to leave Nelly in the secure car park we've been staying in um, which is really close to the centre so it's been really handy but it doesn't look like there's any car parks near the bunker so we're going to catch the bus which apparently is super cheap like not even a pound um, I guess our day and then this afternoon when we come back we'll just do some laptop work in a cafe because um, there's a million cafes here and then tattoo time.
um, and then tomorrow we're actually thinking to catch up for the last couple of days um, we're gonna go into Montenegro tomorrow and start a campsite um, so we can relax a bit because it's not the most relaxing atmosphere here exciting couple of days and just keep on moving really After a few wrong turns we found the bus stop and someone who spoke enough English to put us on the right bus. So with crossed fingers we set off for Bunker. Catch the blue bus, I think it's number 40, just outside of the mosque and the clock tower in the central Tirana. Um, you're better off just asking the bus driver, or well, there's actually these ticket guys that say in the bus as well. You're better off just asking him uh, where bunk out one, if this is the right bus, and they'll, they'll pretty much like give you personal service. Um, but yeah, you basically stay in that bus right to the end of the service and then you can jump off that bus and jump on another bus and it's like a round loop and it brings you back past Bankart um, but yeah, tickets are like 40 lakh for an all day pass which is ridiculous, that's like, I don't know, six small yeah, so do that, now we're here walking down this creepy tunnel, I don't know if you can see behind me, but it's crazy Hey guys, bring a jacket because supposedly it's cold down there. Bunker is an art centre providing public access to the anti-nuclear bunker created to protect Albanians' military and political leadership in time of crisis. The NOW Museum highlights what it was like in Albania during the 45 years it was under communist rule. Tegan doesn't have to duck, unlike us main people. Like that, be sure. The construction of these tunnels started in 1972 and has an overall surface area of 2,685 square metres, reaching over five underground levels with 106 offices and an assembly point doubling as a cinema hall. The build was inspired after military leadership visited North Korea. This is creepy. Enver Hoxha was Albania's ruler for four decades. From the close of World War II until the mid-1980s, he ruled the country under a brand of communism, designed to turn Albania into a modern, independent country. He believed that enemies from both the East and West planned to invade his tiny, mountainous country, and while the fighting raged on, he, along with the rest of the ruling elite, would coordinate in the residence of this bunker. So, so far, the pretty cool. It's nuts, like everything's laid out the same, well, I guess as accurate as possible. And it's November time now, and there's like no one here, which is always ideal. I mean, it's slightly creepy. It's a little bit musty smelling. We'll continue looking around, um, and we'll catch back soon. Sweet. As well as this bunker, 207,000 were planned to be planted all over Albania, but only 168,000 were actually built. The renovated rooms in the labyrinth complex have been filled with the kind of furniture and fittings of the time, and how they expected to fight against an invasion. At ease, soldier. <laughs> I've gone and done it now. <laughs> This is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. 
cinema in a bunker. After hours of walking around, our feet were starting to ache, so we decided it was about time to get out of these bunkers and back into the sunlight. Alright, team, we made it out alive. Um, that was really cool. Yeah, it was really cool. I don't know what to expect, but it's huge. Yeah, it's insane. Um, but now we're going to catch the bus, head back. Um, I'm sure. We'll, yeah, I'm sure we'll link a map just to make it easier for anyone that wants to come here. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. Alright, see you guys. Hey guys, um, we are off now. Um, we've been at this car park for about four nights and it's time to move on. So we're approaching the Albanian Montenegro border now from the Albanian side. Basically, no one really spoke any English or they decided not to speak English. I just had the impression that they wanted us to have drugs on us. 